Welcome to today's Enterprise AI World webinar, brought to you by MoveWorks, Camunda, Informatica, and Isera. I'm Mary D. Ojala, co-editor at Enterprise AI World magazine, and I will be the moderator for today's broadcast. Our presentation today is titled The Rise of Agentic AI, the New Era of Autonomous Intelligence. And now, let me turn the event over to Rahul Guha, Vice President of Product Management, ICERA. My name is Rahul Guha. I'm the VP of Product at uh, ICERA. Uh, just a you know, quick introduction to ICERA. We were formed in 2017. Uh, the, the stack itself, as you have seen, right, the, as the industry changed, the uh, current technology stack is very much geared towards, uh, you know, how AI agents help companies transform, uh, more shift towards the left, towards their own employees solving their issues rather than having to, you know, depend on a service desk. Uh, customers range from, you know, you know, really large organizations like the ones that you see on the screen here, uh, the, the Adobe is a Gideon's of the world, to uh, medium-sized organizations as well. Uh, Core use cases that we uh, help organizations address are on the employee experience side, uh, think IT, HR, finance, procurement, as well as on the customer experience side. So uh, think of you know big brands uh, having their web chat, having different channels uh, opened up to the customers to ask questions or to get their work done. Uh, Great recognition from the analyst community, uh, as well as uh, you know from the uh, from the universities like Stanford, which we are you know working with very closely uh, from some benchmarking related activities. Now uh, let's take a step back and uh, let's kind of you know understand how the the, the promise of this agent AI as we think about the age of agent AI and the rise of agent AI, why is that so? Now, this is typically what an organizational, you know, information architecture, if you will, looks like today, right? You have the end users, this could be employees, this could be customers of the organization, essentially, essentially interacting uh, with the brand, right, through the systems of engagement. Uh, there has been a lot of innovation on the systems of engagement side, right? We have the systems of collaboration, we have uh, the co-pilots, uh, you know, helping with like asking questions and stuff. But in most cases, what happens is these questions, this request, these issues that users are reporting uh, end up in some sort of a ticketing system, right? And we call it ITSM systems. It could be the HS service desk system, whatever, right? Some sort of ticketing system to be picked up by humans, right? Who has to, uh, you know, orchestrate in a in a human way, right along the messy middle office and the and the, and the back office. Of course, there exists you know uh, different types of workflows uh, that that help with this kind of orchestration today. But the result that we see, like for companies which are trying to shift left more towards the users being able to uh, you know do the work uh, themselves, is that it's still not there, right? The resolution rate or for that, what do we call as auto resolution rate, is still in the in the in the mid teens or something. If you if you think of a traditional or typical organization, so contrast this with what agentic AI uh, enables us to do. Uh, so this middle box that you see, okay, this is where the AI agents are uh, essentially orchestrating right themselves along along the lines of different kinds of you know those business functions. So if a user request or some issue is to be reported that comes in, it's not a human being that's trying to figure it out, right? What, what API to call, what, what workflow to execute, whom to you know, place a phone call, that's the AI agent's job to orchestrate that. What is different between this type of orchestration versus the orchestration that exists today, or you know, if you go back like you know, five to 10 years, is that you know, as as the administrators of these systems, we shouldn't have to draw this, you know, really big decision trees and uh, workflows, flowcharts, uh, which essentially become stale the moment the process changes, right? So the AI agent's job is 
that you know we will be able to give them the tools give them the set of apis give them the proper context right the proper context that they can decipher from the user from the users asking the question or the organization in general and they need to be the ai agents need to be able to figure out you know how should i call these tools right what is the sequence of operations that i need to perform which is called planning right what is the planning that i need to do in order to get this answer back to the user who is asking this question to get this request fulfilled somebody coming in and asking for uh, maybe a new laptop right and this laptop happens to be uh, you know something that i need to get uh, to be procured because i don't have it in my warehouse uh, how do i how do i call my sap system uh, through which apis to make that to make that you know request into the sap system get the procurement uh, you know uh, the procurement uh, kind of you know order fulfilled right and then get back to the user uh, not maybe not in the same chat session maybe you know asynchronously so that's all so think of your best help desk agent uh, how do we how do we you know uh, replace or not replace, but essentially, you know, help that person or essentially have the agent kind of, you know, work like that best help person. So what is the, what is the result of this? The result that we are seeing at ICERA for many of the organizations that we work with, is a tremendous increase in this auto resolution rate. So you think of, uh, think of what, uh, you know, what uh, Adobe is, is seeing, think of what Aramark, Aramark operates most of the major kind of, you know, the, uh, the national parks here in the U.S. Uh, anytime you go to Yosemite or go to Yellowstone, right? I mean, uh, you go and you uh, the tickets, the vending machines, everything is operated by them. So they have these field workers that are asking questions, not just through this typical, you know, collaboration channels that we are so like we as desk workers are so familiar with through phone, right? And then this is this is where you know companies like Aramark are seeing. Uh, close to 80% resolution rate, more than that sometimes, right? Uh, and this is because of the AI agents performing the work and performing it accurately. Accuracy is key here. And also consistency is key here. So if the AI agent did something and gave an answer to a question uh, in, a certain, in a certain way, uh, as an enterprise, you would expect the AI agent to perform exactly like that the second time it has to answer the same question. So uh we measure ourselves or the any agentic ai system needs to measure measure itself along the lines of accuracy uh the stability uh the latency and of course the security okay so those are the four dimensions of an agentic ai system that we have to continuously track any enterprise that is uh that goes in in this journey uh that is you know pursuing this journey has to track uh, from from an agentic ai system perspective now what does this mean for the uh, for the user, right? Uh, <clears throat> try to move to the next button. Okay, yeah, there you go. So what? So 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 what we essentially uh, you know talk about is this system of agents. Okay, so in order to get to this, we need a system of agents. What is a system of agents? A system of agents is think of it as a hierarchical set of agents working together. At the very top, uh, we need to have something like what we call as a universal agent that is interacting with the user, right? In the same channel, right? The user shouldn't have to go to multiple different agents to ask an IT question or an HR question or a facilities question. They have to come to the same place to ask this question. It's the job of this universal agent to, uh, to route and to orchestrate amongst the various different domain agents. The reason that these domain agents are separated from each other is is where governance comes in. You probably don't want the engineering team members to have a, have a visibility into the HR documents or the HR processes or the HR agent work that is happening inside of the HR domain agent. Okay. Uh, now, each of these domain agents are essentially orchestrating or planning across many different task agents. And think of task agents as use cases, right? For IT, a task agent could be a password reset agent. It could be uh, a you know, a software provisioning agent, right? So think of this domain agents working to orchestrate or to get work done for that domain, but it's the job of the universal agent to route it to the right domain agent and to orchestrate across domain agents. So think of employee onboarding, right? It is orchestrated across multiple domain agents. So that's the, that's the system of agents that 
uh, you know, uh, an opinionary kind of a system of agents helps an enterprise to get with the to get on with their enterprise, like the agent journey. Now, uh, let's see what this means, right? Uh, because as we look forward, right, uh, this is definitely going to be a federated agentic world, just like cloud evolved. Cloud, there was not a single cloud; there were multiple clouds that evolved. Uh, similarly, we do see a world where there will be multiple agents, multiple kinds of agents. So there are some agents which, which could be developed on top of our platform. There could be agents developed on part of, you know, some other platform. Uh, maybe, you know, the systems of records, as we are seeing, are coming up with their own agents. Uh, so it will be the job of the universal agent in the system of agents to work across this federated set of agents. Okay, so this is going to be an, an important piece. Uh, how does an organization kind of, you know, prepare uh, for uh, this kind of federated agent architecture is where the IT team comes in. The IT team has to put in place this kind of an information architecture blueprint for the agents to work uh, on. Now, uh, uh, finally, uh, what is a domain specific agent for the best kind of the accuracy and stability that I talked about, each of these domain specific agents needs to have access to its own LLM. Okay. Uh, this particular LLM could be a small language model. It doesn't have to be a large language model like an OpenAI or a, or a Llama 4 for every specific uh, domain agent or every specific task. It could be a small language model that is specifically designed and tuned for that particular domain or for that, for that particular task. So uh, from that system of agents perspective, if you think about you know, the universal agent, the domain agent and the task agents, it is essentially uh, you know, how we structure it for an organization, how an organization basically you know, structures that system of agents and how it defines using the, using the kind of the agentic orchestration, that, that, that gateway, which LLM to call for which agent, right? That is the, that is the big part. The orchestration is the big part here. Uh, so with that, you know, I'll just leave uh, you with basically you know, the type of things that we are seeing in the organization. Of course, there are traditional shift left type of activities where we are uh, addressing questions uh, that are answered through knowledge based articles that are answered through typical kind of you know workflows uh, but more and more we are seeing you know cross domain right where we are uh, beginning to see uh, application of these agents across across different domains where the the agents need to uh, communicate with each other work with each other uh, to get the job done